Um, hi everyone, thanks very much for um, joining today. Um, we've got about um, a 45 minute um, session around supporting children's speech, language and communication development. Uh, my name's Shona Crichton, I'm a uh, speech and language therapist by background, I'm currently working for the Communication Trust, which is um, a coalition of um, community and voluntary organisations uh, who all work together to um, uh, support the children's workforce in, in speech, language and communication. There's some of our some of our uh, members of our consortium there, um, all of whom have some expertise in speech, language and communication um, and through all of us, we aim to um, support the development of, of children with, with speech, language and communication needs. Um, so today's session uh, is really an overview of um, uh, the importance of adults, not only yourselves as practitioners, but also uh, parents uh, and caregivers to be able to support the speech, language and communication um, skills of the children and young people that they're working with. Um, and also I'm hoping to be able to give you just a summary of some of the approaches um, and some of the information and resources that are available to you in order to um, to support children and young people's uh, speech, language and communication. Um, so hopefully by the end of the session um, you'll uh, have an understanding of the importance of adults supporting the speech, language and communication development of children. Uh, you'll be aware of some simple approaches to allow you to be able to support speech, language and communication development. Um, you'll be aware of some of the ways that you as practitioners can work with parents and carers um, to support their, their children's development um, and also um, hopefully some practical information resources that you're able to take away with you um, to help your own uh, knowledge and understanding of how to support speech, language and communication development. Um, so this is the third session in a set of three of these Thinking Thursdays uh, that we've done for you from the Communication Trust. Uh, the first session with Lisa looked at um, understanding uh, a typical speech, language and communication development. Then last time we looked at how to identify those children who may have uh, some needs in terms of their, their development. Um, and today is going to be about looking at once those children um, have been identified as having needs, how we can support those children, but also um, just about uh, how for all children uh, there are many strategies that we could all use just to support, uh, support speech, language and communication in general across the whole population. So just to think about how how children initially develop uh, their speech and language and communication skills, um, obviously their skills that develop right from birth and we'll talk a bit later today about um, how we can develop communication in uh, between sort of parents and babies as well um, and obviously attachment uh, falls into that as well, attachment being very important um, for kind of early interaction skills. Um, and for some parents that's more difficult than for others if they're suffering with um, other needs such as postnatal depression. It can have an impact then on their interactions with their child. Um, they speech, language and communication develop through our interactions with other people. So uh, what what we say then gets a response and that's how we then develop and extend our, our skills. Um, we would expect to see certain patterns of development um, through speech, language and communication. So we expect skills to be developing in a particular order and at a particular time. Um, and this is true whatever language a child is learning. And we talked a bit at the last Thinking Thursday about how to use some of the ages and stages resources to enable us to see whether children are following those expected patterns of development and where there may be cause for concern. Um, it's also important to note that children develop, children and young people uh, continue to develop their speech, language and communication skills throughout, uh, throughout, their, throughout their lives. We all continue to develop throughout our lives. Um, 
So even at, uh, you know, at secondary school level, it's important to be considering um, how we're supporting children to, to continue to develop some of their skills that they learn right from birth. Um, again, we spoke a bit uh, last time in the Thinking Thursday session about how um, how central speech language and communication is to uh, uh, to learning other skills as well, um, and how much of an impact it has. So, uh, without adequate speech language and communication skills, children will also struggle with other areas of their development. So, by us as adults supporting speech, language and communication, we also are supporting many other areas of their development, um, the list of which is there, their play, their learning, their social development, uh, their literacy skills, their behaviour, their emotional development, their own self-confidence and their thinking and their problem-solving skills. All of those require, um, require us to be using our speech, language and communication skills and without that strong foundation um, those other areas of development um, will, will be an area of difficulty for those children. Um, in terms of, of, of supporting children, um, children's speech, language and communication development, um, there, this is quite a useful way to think about some of the support and the levels of support that children may need. Um, so at the bottom of the, the pyramid there, that's uh, the universal level, which is what all children are, um, are entitled to and, and should be receiving. And that will mean... Um, so supporting speech, language and communication at a, at a universal level means things like um, being able to support parents and carers with information and resources to encourage them as, um, as important people in developing their child's uh, language skills. Um, it might be that it means uh, the child has access to places, uh, uh, play settings or nursery settings where they are communication friendly environments where that child can develop their skills to the best of their abilities um, and it's also about practitioners working in those settings feeling confident in their role um, to support children's speech and language and communication development so those are the sorts of things that at a universal level um, we would, you know, it's important for all children to have access to so that all children are able to uh, develop their speech, language and communication skills to the best of their ability. Um, the next step up from there is, is a targeted level. So these may be children where we see they might be coming through with slightly delayed language development and might need a little bit of more, um, more specific interventions in order for them to make the progress that they'll need to make. Or equally, this might be about us um, identifying some of those children who need support and then through that at targeted level, they might either move up to a more specialist level of support if that's what's required or um, they may well be able to move down to a more universal level once some of their needs have been um, addressed and supported adequately. Um, and this session today is very much about supporting those children at universal and at targeted level. At specialist level that's really where there's, um, it's for those children who have got those very long-term uh, persistent Potentially, um, potentially complex speech, language, and communication needs, and need quite a high level of um, of specialist uh, intervention um, uh, from, you know, for example, from from speech and language therapists. Obviously, in collaboration with all the other people involved in that child's life. Um, so some things just to take into account in terms of what we know that can really affect speech and language com and communication development and what's come out from um, bits of research that have been done around this area. Um, so the amount of language that children hear is really important. So the more that the more that children hear um, language around them, the more time their parents spend talking with them, and the more types of words. So there's sort of the different vocabulary that they that they're exposed to. Once they've once children hear all of that, they then are able to use more words themselves. Um, 
so that just shows how important it is for us to be speaking and talking to children <clears throat> in whichever environment. It's also very important um, to think about what what we're saying to children. Um, so children seem to develop strong language skills with parents who ask more open-ended questions or ask children to elaborate on what they're saying and also when the topic of conversation is of interest and is motivating and engaging for the child. Um, we also know from research that to focus on what the child is talking about and having familiar routines also promote a really shared understanding of what's happening within that child's environment. <clears throat> and cooperative interactions are really important. So having those conversations with children about how people feel and therefore how that affects what they do is really important, both in terms of learning uh, their social communication skills, but also some of those other areas we talked about. Um, for example, their, the child's own emotional development and uh, the development of some of their behavior, behavioral skills as well. Um, all of these studies here are based on um, parents language with children but equally as practitioners um, working with children these are really key things to think about as well in terms of our interactions. Um, there's also been quite a big piece of work on the importance of the communication environment so um, more than anything um, a child's communication environment is a stronger predictor for their language skills at two years old um, than their social background. Um, so we do know that children who, who are coming from socially disadvantaged backgrounds will tend to have more impoverished language skills um, than those who come from more affluent backgrounds. However, this study shows that it's the actual, the environment that that child is in that has the most um, uh, the most impact on a child's language development and in terms of environment they looked at things like the number of books available to a child, the number of toys available and also a child's attendance at preschool and um, those were the kind of factors that they found to be really crucial in in what a child's um, speech language and communication skills are like in the long run. Um, so when can we support speech, language and communication? Uh, it's everywhere around us. We can do it any time and all the time. There are constantly um, opportunities for communication and interaction um, uh, throughout daily activities that we do with, um, with our children and young people. Um, it's very useful to use everyday routines and conversations um, as a way to support speech, language and communication. Um, any activity, any playtime, any social time with other children is also really crucial. Um, of course you could also uh, set up specific opportunities or activities if you felt that that was needed um, for some children. Uh, it can be useful to do it in one-to-one, -one, so just with one other adult or in a group. So with other children, children learn a lot from what other children are doing as well and really pick up on their peers. Uh, so that can be really useful. Um, and, and again, it can be about when children are talking with you or when they're talking with some other children as well. So basically, any, any opportunity um, is... Uh, any activity is an opportunity in order for us to, to support speech, language and communication development. Um, some, some more kind of key principles um, uh, to think about. Uh, so it's about listening to and valuing the contributions of children and young people and also considering their level of development. So um, thinking about where they are now and where you want them to be going next. So um, sometimes as an adult, working with a child, um, we need to be the ones who might just extend what they're saying slightly in order to move them on to the other, to the next stage of development. For example, a, a very young child, if they're saying car, uh, the adult's response to that might be blue car, so you can support them onto that next level of, of two-word development and two-word phrases. Um, Modelling good communication as an adult, um, making language learning fun, so trying to make it something that is based in what the child is interested in and motivated by and making the activity <clears throat> um, uh, more, much more child-led and adult-led in order to engage that child for longer and give them more opportunity to pick up on the language models that they're hearing. 
Uh, working with parents and carers, of course, is, is crucial because they know their child best um, and they're often the ones spending the, the most time with them and that means that they can support their, the child's speech, language and communication development throughout everyday routines and activities. Um, it's about making most of any opportunity throughout the day um, and also as practitioners working with children um, obviously it's our role to just keep an eye on how things are progressing and make a note um, and to allow for us to do that um, kind of early identification if there are any concerns that we can then uh, keep an eye on or make onward referrals as we spoke about in the last session. So I'm just going to go through over the next few slides some more um, some more kind of specific strategies around more specific uh, age groups and also areas of speech, language and communication. So this slide here is about um, supporting the speech, uh, language and communication development of babies. Um, as I spoke about earlier, attachment is really crucial um, for, in order for... Um, mothers or caregivers to really respond to, to their children's very, very early interactions. Um, it's important to give babies time to process um, what they're seeing, what they're hearing and time for them to respond. And there's also so many opportunities for early communication, so things like um, eye contact, um, making sounds, turn taking with making sounds, so the baby babbles, the adult babbles back. All of those are very crucial early foundations for early communication communication skills, um, using, um, using parentese, which is that kind of exaggerated, uh, exaggerated intonation, often at a higher pitch that, that we all tend to naturally use when we speak with a baby, using rhymes and songs, particularly if they can be repetitive and used many, many times. The child is um, that the child uh, is familiar with and can and can become uh, much more engaged in that activity. Um, some shared attention, so that's the, the adult talking about what the child is showing an interest in or the baby showing an interest in, and also using a bit of a run, running commentary for everyday events. Um, and I've just popped at the bottom of this slide here <clears throat> some really useful information um, on the National Liter Literacy Trust website um, around. Uh, uh, their campaign about talking talking to your baby and there's a lot of resources available on that site um, for yourselves as practitioners but also to uh, to share with parents about the importance of um, of developing those speech and language and communication skills right from birth And then when children um, become a little bit older, uh, so, so uh, uh, this is more thinking about young children and how to support their speech and language and communication development, um, there's a, uh, the tips on this slide here uh, are from a DVD clip which can be accessed via YouTube if you um, just type uh, learning to talk, talking to learn um, into, into YouTube, you can access the, um, uh, the video clips that go along with these uh, these suggestions here. Um, so it's things like um, getting the child's attention first, so you might do that by using their name or touching them. Um, very young children will find it very difficult to attend to two things at once. They have very single channeled attention, so if they're looking at something um, they'll find it very very difficult to also be listening to um, what it is that you're saying to them and, and, and picking up on all the lovely language models that are being used used for them. So it's important to get the child's attention, try and get them to look at you and make some eye contact so you know that they're really tuned in to what it is that you're saying and not being distracted by um, whatever else it might be that's going on in the room. Um, oh, typo, making learning fun that should be. Um, obviously uh, very young children will find it very difficult to, uh, to attend to something that is more adult led and will prefer to do something that they're motivated by and interested in and led by them. So to make it fun means that it's something that they're interested in and that they're motivated by.
using simple and repetitive language, so um, speaking slowly, um, trying to uh, emphasise key words within a sentence, um, being aware of the child's language level, so if a child is only speaking at single words, then as an adult speaking with them we should be thinking about perhaps only, um, only using two to three word utterances with them, otherwise possibly what we're saying is too complex for them to be able to listen to and understand and learn from. Uh, building on what the child says to you, um, so again like I said earlier, if the child is using single words you can add on to those or um, if a child makes a comment about something to respond to that comment and try to again make the interaction very child-led so that it's about responding to what the child's doing as opposed to um, as opposed to it being following an adult's agenda. Um, demonstrating rather than criticizing so uh, for example if a child um, if a child mispronounces a word uh, rather than saying no you don't say it like that, you say it like this it would be just about repeating what the child has said so for example if they said I saw a um, I, I saw a tat you might say oh yeah you saw a cat and just emphasizing what it is that they've said not in a uh, not in a way to criticize them but just demonstrating the correct way that you would expect it to be heard from them Imitating the child's language, um, so thinking about, again, imitating um, what it is that they say, repeating it back to them, and using your language at about the same level that they're using theirs. Using all the senses to teach new words, so um, if, it, if it's a, some, a new word that you're trying to teach them, perhaps it's a new fruit that they've not come across, it's about allowing them to see that object, um, to smell it, to taste it, to touch it, to talk more about it, to relate it to their experience of the world already. Um, giving the child time to respond, so very young children will need time in order to process what it is that adults are saying to them um, and it can be useful sometimes to chunk language <clears throat> to allow them to give them, uh, to give the children time to, in order to process. Be careful with questions, um, this is about very often um, as adults in order to encourage children to talk we tend to ask questions um, but what's actually been found is that it's much more useful to comment rather than question so uh, it's much more helpful for a child to hear oh there's a dog on your t-shirt as opposed to what's that on your t-shirt it means that they're getting more richer language models from the uh, from the adult who's speaking with them and also using the full range of expression. So just thinking about the way that you're using your voice, your intonation, your pitch, um, uh, to make your voice interesting and engaging and hopefully will uh, maintain the interest uh, of the child as well. Um, this one in particular is about um, uh, supporting speech, so if you remember from um, your, the previous sessions we talked about the fact that speech is um, the sounds that children use, so the sounds that make up words, so you might have a child who you know who mispronounces, excuse me, who mispronounces words and who doesn't say them as clearly as you feel that they should be doing. So some of these are very useful ways in order to um, really develop some of those speech speech skills, pronunciation skills. So developing awareness of sounds in the environment, that might mean um, playing listening games where they have to listen to what they can hear outside being quiet for a while, or they close their eyes and have to think about where a sound has come from. Um, encouraging them to use their good listening skills, uh, playing around with rhymes, uh, making sound pictures or having a sound table with pictures or objects that start with the same sound or um, cutting out pictures from magazines and catalogues of um, items that all start with a particular sound. Um, and like I said in the previous slide, it's about making sure that you just model the correct response. So rather than actually um, uh, correcting them, you would just repeat back what it is that they've said, um, but in the correct way and perhaps with just a slight emphasis on what it is that you really want them to listen to. So in this example here, you would just put an emphasis on that k sound at the starting cat to help them realise that it starts with a k 
and not a t. Um, and as with all skills, speech sound development um, follows a very expected pattern and you can use your ages and stages resources to work out whether a child is um, developing typically in terms of their speech or whether they're exhibiting um, uh, some delayed, delayed aspects of their speech development. Now thinking more about thinking more about language. Um, so language is a, is talking and understanding, um, <clears throat> and there are lots and lots and lots of ways um, for us as adults to support children's language. Um, and I'm just going to talk through a couple of the um, of this of the approaches here. Um, the first one is about um, us as adults adapting our language. <clears throat> so if we get our language right, it means that the children that we're working with will understand us better and it will also help um, help us to support their expressive language as well. Um, so the way that we speak with children impacts not only on how they're understanding, but also it will then have an impact on what they're able to say as well. Um, so quite often what has been found in, in conversations between adults and children is that adults can tend to dominate the conversations, particularly for those children where they do have delayed language skills. So it's really important to think about adapting, uh, adapting our own language depending on the skills and the needs of any particular child. And the second one there is about scaffolding. So scaffolding is really the idea that as adults we're in a really good position to be able to build on um, what a child or a young person is already able to do. So it's about just um, seeing where they're at and then extending and scaffolding up to the next level to sort of almost show them and model where that next level of their development is. Um, for adapting your language, um, just some things to think about here. Um, uh, so how much as adults we, we talk, again, children who are often uh, who are language delayed often there's a tendency for adults to speak more within the interaction because we don't like silence um, but it's okay to have a bit of quiet time and to think about leaving some spaces for that child to think about what's been said and respond um, the length and complexity of the sentences that we use so again thinking about it's about knowing that child knowing the stage that they're at and trying to match up the length and the complexity of, of the sentences that we use with the skills of that child. Um, think about any new or complicated words um, and support the child with understanding what those mean. Um, think about how much time we give for the child to respond. Um, speech rate it, uh, can be a really useful thing to think about quite often um, we tend to speak very quickly so for children it just sounds as though all the words are running together for children who are uh, struggling with their language it's very it's more helpful for them to hear each word as more of a separate entity otherwise they tend to hear words running together so for example many children will think cup of tea is at one word without really understanding the fact that it's a cup of tea um, and you do have children who learn phrases like that without really understanding the separate single words within that kind of phrase. Uh, again as I said before thinking about the questions and the balance of comments and questions um, if you're asking a question there needs to be a good reason behind it um, and use of praise so making uh, making praise very specific so rather than good boy or good girl and um, thinking about exactly what it is that you're the behaviors that you're um, that you're praising so I can see you're doing some really good sitting or that was lovely listening or well done it for looking at me while I was speaking those kind of really specific praise that the child knows exactly what it is that they've done well and that you're pleased with um, and also just demonstrating modeling modeling language and expanding on what it is that the child's saying <clears throat> Just a bit more about questioning. Um, so we know that if we ask too many questions and also there are certain types of questions that, that we use as adults um, that, that actually can inhibit children's um, language and communication. So for example, um, 
if we use too many questions or if we ask the wrong kinds of questions, we might find that children might not join in because they don't know how to respond to what it is that we've asked them um, or they only give answers to those questions without expanding or ex extending on what they're saying. Um, they might say less because of the way the question's worded. The quality might be lower. Um, there might be fewer opportunities to talk with others. Um, and there's less opportunity for exploring and expanding their thinking and their language because they're very limited to what it is um, that they've been asked by that adult. Um, and then in the arrow section of this diagram, this is what, as adults, um, how we can um, think about our questions. So trying to comment instead of questioning. Um, and also just thinking about question types. So, for example, there's been a lot of evidence that um, if we're uh, asking children closed questions, uh, where the answer, the only answer they can give is yes or no, um, are far less beneficial for language development than using more, um, more open-ended questions, where the child has more opportunity to, um, to use their own ideas and their own thinking. Um, uh, this table here is again from some research that was done in terms of um, questionings, uh, uh, questioning and, and the most useful um, uh, ways of adapting our language to speak with children. Um, so you've got enforced repetitions at the top of the um, uh, of the table. There, enforced repetitions are where. Um, uh, as an adult, we are asking the child to repeat something that we've said. Um, and in this example here in the table, what's happened is the adult has asked the child to say something that's far too long and far too complex for that child to be able to repeat. And therefore, they've um, the child has then just come back with what it is that they feel they are able to say and that they are able to understand. Um, so it's not always useful for us to ask children to repeat what they hear because they might repeat it back but they might not understand what they've said which isn't helpful to them or we might be putting a lot of pressure on them by asking them to repeat something that they're not yet able to do. Um, so in terms of our language as adults that's not a useful, a useful thing for us to do. Um, two choice questions. Um, again, what happens here is that the adult might say, um, uh, is that a giraffe or an elephant? And then you've limited the child to only be able to respond in one way. Um, and it just means that the child will tend to say less or it's, uh, it's really tends to be very limited to a single word answer or a point or a point. Um, and also it can be very difficult to know whether the child has really understood the question because uh, it's very easy obviously just to make a guess with a 50-50 with a choice. Um, saying that, for children with significantly delayed speech and language and communication development, um, the idea of making choices to allow them to interact in some way can be very useful. Um, so it's about knowing the child and, and, and using that where, only where appropriate. Um, uh, WH question, so who's that, what are you doing, where's he going, um, they can tend to make a child quite passive um, unless the child is at a level of understanding where they really can understand those questions and respond to them appropriately. So just be careful with the types of children that you use these questions with. Um, personal contributions. Um, what the research found was that when adults use this kind of interaction, what tends to happen is that children will initiate more and there'll be more conversational turns. So it won't, the, com the interaction won't just finish, it, it tends to continue and continue and continue with the child being more of the leader in the conversation. Um, and again, uh, the bottom one, this is the best one uh, that, that's been found from the research, which is the idea of using um, fatics, which is um, just the adults sort of showing that they're listening, showing that they're uh, engaged and interested, but actually just allowing the child to kind of continue with the story themselves. Again, this would be something that we could use for, for children who've got 
very good speech, language and communication skills, but it might not be appropriate for those children where we're really trying to uh, develop some of those delayed skills. And then the other approach, so we had adapting our language as adults, and then the other approach um, is about thinking about scaffolding. So <clears throat> scaffolding is about how adults can provide the support for children to allow them to move on to their next stage um, or level of development. So ways that we might do this might be to add to what a child says. Uh, the example I've given um, previously about if a child says car, we might say blue car or big car or fast car. So adding to what the child says to move them on to that next stage of development. So in this case, uh, onto two word phrases um, or, or extending, um, extending what a child says as well. Um, modelling examples, so us as adults um, modelling where we're expecting the child to get to, where the next stage of development is. Again, uh, modelling a, uh, um, a two-word sentence for the child where they're at one word level, that kind of thing. Um, encouraging children to rehearse and practice, this is really useful for um, more older children, but it can be really useful for them to practice some of their skills, rehearse what it is that they're wanting to, to learn or to do and then um, that means that they're moving up to the next level. Um, breaking tasks down into smaller steps to allow them to be more manageable so that we're really supporting the child with completing the task but completing it in a way that is manageable for them. Um, teaching and helping children to learn new words, so for very young children that might be about adults um, using loads of repetition, uh, saying, a, saying the same word many times, uh, using that same word in many different contexts. For older children it might be about um, uh, using mind maps or um, uh, using their prior knowledge of the world to support them with learning new vocabulary and, and new words. Providing structures for giving information or telling stories. Um, so if a child is trying to tell you something that's happened um, as an adult, uh, supporting them with where they might go next with that story or asking questions to allow them to get their story across. Um, and using visual prompts and props can be really useful as well for children to just to support them with getting to that next level because it really supports their understanding of where it is that they're at. Here's just some examples of um, extending a child's talking here. Um, so you've got the child saying there's a bus and the adult saying, yeah, there's a big bus. Um, that's just showing how, how we can add an extra word to support children, to scaffold them up to the next level. I can see a big spider and then the adult says, me too, he's enormous. So that's helping with uh, uh, developing vocabulary. Um, and then the child saying, I can't play football today, my leg hurts. You can't play football because your leg hurts. That's the adult showing the child how they can use those linking words to make more complex sentences and stories. Um, this slide is about communication. So in the last session we spoke about communication being... Um, there's um, more about the interaction side of of how we use our language. So it's about uh, non-verbal communication or understanding conversational rules or knowing how to play a game. It's those sorts of skills. Um, so here are just some uh, uh, some ideas about how those skills can be supported in, in children and young people. Um, so we as adults can model a child if a child is having difficulty asking for help or um, requesting something that they need. As adults we can support them by modelling that, modelling how they can ask for things, modelling how they can ask for help. Um, we can also model um, other skills like using gesture when we speak, encouraging good eye contact, um, using turn taking, those sorts of skills. Um, group work can be particularly useful for children who are finding communication difficult. So again, learning from their peers um, and seeing communication um, uh, sort of in, in practice really. 
um, ensure there are opportunities for children and young people to communicate with each other. Um, so uh, a child communicating with its with his peers is far more powerful um, to learn some of those skills than with an adult. So um, you know, supporting um, supporting children with attending play settings, um, play groups. Uh, library groups, any of that kind of thing is really helpful for children to develop those social interaction and that skills and that ability to um, interact with other, other children and interact with their peers. Um, you might need an adult around to support that, particularly with young children who don't tend to always show a lot of interest in, in playing cooperatively together, but an adult um, there can very much support that and facilitate that. Um, and it's also important to think about learning through play, so children really develop their knowledge of the world through their play skills and so um, their knowledge of communication can also be developed through some of those play skills. You know, a simple thing like a turn-taking game, um, when you each take a turn within a game, um, can be a really important skill in learning about how conversations work, for example. Um, I think it's important to speak about how um, how we can really encourage um, our parents that we know um, in becoming confident in developing their children's speech, language and communication. Um, we know that children's language develops best in a parent-child relationship. <clears throat> That's because parents know their, their children best. They know where they're at. They know exactly how to um, adapt their language for their child or how to extend their language for their child because they know the level that their child is already at. Um, and also because we know there are so many opportunities for speech, language and communication development through everyday routines and activities that are happening daily. Um, it also means if we encourage speech and language and communication development at home, it also means that everybody can become involved, um, so uh, dads, grandparents, um, uh, sibling, older siblings if that's appropriate. Um, and we know that children spend most of their time not at school or in their educational settings, but at home um, and with, with their parents. So if we can encourage parents from a young age to understand how important it is to develop their children's speech, language and communication, um, then that means hopefully that's something that will continue throughout that child's life all the time that they're at home with their parents thinking about um, uh, communication opportunities. Um, there's just some ideas here about, as practitioners, how we can really work um, uh, collaboratively with parents in order for children to develop their speech, language, communication skills to the best of their abilities. Um, so sharing ideas, advice, information, there are loads of published resources, um, fact sheets, information, um, many of which I've, I've popped at the end of the, the presentation here, um, that can be shared with parents. Um, just about how they can really encourage um, communication development in their children. Um, we can, um, a, ch a parent will know exactly how their child is progressing usually and will usually really appreciate the opportunity to talk with someone about how their child is getting on, how they're progressing and as practitioners we can bring for example ages and stages resources to show them um, either their child is doing really well and is developing exactly how we would be expecting or that there are some areas of difficulty and how to support them in, in, in developing those. Um, Obviously it's important to listen to parents' ideas and concerns um, and again we can use the resources available um, to help parents understand whether those concerns are well rooted or whether there's nothing that they need to be worried about. Um, you can invite, it's lovely when parents can come and see their child communicate in action so um, going along to play groups. Um, uh, to see exactly what's happening and how their child is using their communication skills in a you know in a real life environment with other adults and other children. Um, it can be useful to offer workshops or sessions or events, um, perhaps where you have some of the information resources available to talk through with parents. Um, and also it can be nice to model some ideas or some examples. So for example, um, some parents um, need support with understanding how best to play with their children. So it can be about showing them um, you know, how to engage their child more in play or something like that that you can support them with as a practitioner. 
there's just a list here um, of some practical ideas that you could that you could share with parents um, in terms of some sort of simply simple uh, everyday activities that parents may not be thinking about as communication activities, um, but actually can easily be. Um, be thought of in that way um, and I've just listed some um, some items there and there's um, in the um, uh, the tools and resources slide at the end of the presentation I've also um, put a link to um, a page where there are lots and lots of free um, activity ideas that parents can access and and get ideas from in terms of how to support speech language and communication skills at home and um, that you could direct them to. Um, I think it's it's very useful for us to be aware that um, uh, we might support parents with feeling confident in um, in developing their, their child's uh, speech, language and communication skills. So for example, um, it's really useful if we can explain to parents why it's important. Um, so all the bits that we've spoken about, about speech, language and communication being so central to so many other areas of development, uh, future attainment, future social relationships, um, uh, future behaviour, emotional development, all of those skills, um, if we can really support parents understanding why it's so important then uh, hopefully it will help us with um, parents being more, more on board with helping uh, some, of the, some of this development, of the, some of these skills. Um, it can be useful for parents to know what, what to expect from their child's uh, speech, language and communication skills. So again, sharing some of the um, ages and stages resources or on the Talking Point website that I've referenced at the end of the presentation, there are some really useful um, uh, sort of handouts about what to expect at different ages that parents often find really useful <clears throat> to know how their child is doing in terms of typical development. Uh, obviously parents like to have the support, the access to the support that they need um, as and when they need it that we, we're able to offer. Um, it can be quite useful I think for some parents to have a demonstration or to have been shown what it is that they're being asked to do at home. So for example you could model a nice buy game or something with them. Um, and it's also nice to have had the right amount of feedback from people that they're working with. So if, when a parent comes back to you and says, I've been doing X, Y, and Z, um, uh, for them to have some really positive feedback about that and then to be able to support them with other things that they might be able to do. So just the last couple of slides here, I've just popped some things on on, on this last slide um, really for places to go where you might find some really useful tools and resources um, for yourself as practitioners um, and also for um, um, to be able to share with parents or caregivers um, about how they can really support their children's speech, language and communication development. Um, there's also a link there to the YouTube clip that I spoke about um, with the, the Learning to Talk, Talking to Learn DVD clip with all the top tips um, for uh, interaction strategies to use with children. Um, if you have any uh, further questions either about any of these uh, webinars that we've done or um, any general queries or concerns about any child's speech, language or communication difficulties, um, please do get in touch. We've got a, um, an email that's checked regularly and um, that we respond to <clears throat> with any concerns that, that you may have or any further information that you need. Um, if you want to have more of a think about um, uh, your own kind of levels of um, knowledge and skills in terms of um, supporting children's speech and language and communication development. The SLCF is the Speech, Language and Communication Framework which can be accessed via this website um, and it's just a kind of self-assessment tool just to check out where you feel you are personally um, in identifying and supporting speech, language and communication needs and it's also quite useful in just highlighting areas that um, where 
some more support may be needed and some more CPD may be needed. Um, and I've also just added there that there is a level three um, qualification um, uh, specifically around supporting children and young people's speech, language and communication uh, that people may be interested in looking more at if it's an area of interest to you. So, I'm aware that was quite a lot of information. <laughs>